Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, written by Alice Walker. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, in this work, we're talking about women women and creativity, black women specifically in creativity. Um, Alice Walker, in this work, she talks about uh, women who were born during the era of slavery in America, uh, women who were born before black people got civil rights in America, um, and just how much their creativity were, were stifled and just how much they weren't able to express themselves. When you think about the, the, the Southern black women or the black women who was enslaved, uh, who never got a chance to be creative, who never had a chance to be an artist, to be a singer, to be a mother, to be an individual. Um, Alice Walker, throughout this work, throughout this essay, throughout this excerpt, she paints a picture for us of, of like what black women went through, what black women went through in the South during the era of slavery. Um, you have to think, in of a way, slavery was much worse for black women. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, black women were not only forced to labor, they were not only forced to work in the fields, they were not only beaten, they were not only brutalized, they were also raped and their children were, were also taken away from them. Uh, black people were breeded, black people were forced to work, black people had no independence, no, no freedom. Uh, but the black women in the South, um, they had to, they were forced not not just to work, but they were forced to make children because um, for a black slave owner, uh, you know, if you have a black woman that's working for you or you have a black woman that you own, why should you go out and buy more slaves when you can have this black woman uh, have as many as babies as possible so that your, your profits can increase so that your farm can do better? Um, so a lot of black women were forced to have five, ten, uh, uh, how many children that they could have, like, it do, it didn't matter. If you could have four, you were going to have four. If you could have ten, you are going to have ten. And they all were being beaten in front of you, taken away from you, killed, brutalized, murdered. It didn't matter. So for the black woman, uh, you have to live, you had to live through an era where you knew that uh, you're, you were probably going to be born and die a slave. Uh, you were going to be raped. Uh, you were go you were pretty much an animal. You were considered as property. You didn't have independence. You didn't have freedom. There was no future for you. Anything you did could have killed you. Anything that you know, anything that you did, um, you know, there was you had no rights. You weren't a human being. Um, so. In this work, Alice Walker really paints a picture for us and, and talks about um, those black women that are kind of forgotten, that we know nothing about. We know nothing about who they are, their creativity, their uh, if they were artists or not. Um, and she tells us that um, it's kind of sad that, that all of this happened to them. It's horrific that all of this happened to them. But the thing that's that's even worse is that all these women, uh, you know, they were creators. They were writers, artists. Um, women that were brilliant. Um, when you think about all the black women that have come, um, that came forth uh, during the 20th century, um, and, and all of art, all the stories, all the fiction, all of the books that were written by black women, and all of the artists, all of the black female artists that exist in the world today, and their talents, and their, their power to sing, and their power to act, and to perform, um, think about how much creativity, and think about how much how much artistry that we've lost because of, of the slavery era in the United States, and pretty much the slavery era all over the world. So Alice Walker kind of feels that pain um, of, of that creativity that mankind has lost. And if you even take it further, this is my own perspective by adding this line, if you think, take it further and think about human history on how women in general have been um, um, suppressed um, in every single country, in every single tribe, in every single ethnicity, in every single community, women have always been um, second when it comes to men. And, and their creativity, their productivity, their artistry, their voice have been stifled. And imagine how far the human you know, humans would be if we were if we were at a hundred percent. Because for the majority of, of, of human existence, um man or men have taken the wheel 
uh, and pretty much done everything and forced women to be mothers and forced women to stay at home and forced women um, to be dependents on men. Uh, but if we were uh, working and the world was turning at 100% um, um, energy or, or, or at 100% from the humankind or for hum human behavior, um, it would be a different world because you would get the art uh, the, the intelligence, the brilliance of women, of women and men, and the world could have could could have been uh, a better place. Um, so all of that goes into this essay. That idea goes into this essay of how much we've lost, of how much we we could have had, and and how much black culture. Um, you know, was kind of erased because we don't know anything about these women. Uh, most of them were not, you know, in public records. They were just property. The same way that a cow or a sheep was property on a farm, that's how they were property to their owners. Um, so she she later goes on, Alice Walker later goes on uh, within this essay. She talks about um, her own mother and, and when, when she, you know, her existence and her life. Now, Alice Walker was born in 1944. So she was born in the era where slavery, um, not slavery, but um, where racism was really prevalent within the United States. Because uh, we know that it, it wasn't until 1968 that the civil rights were enacted. Uh, so basically, Alice Walker lived in, in America, was born in America where slavery still exists. Black people were being killed left and right uh, for no reason where they had no rights. Um, so she saw her mother uh, worked endlessly in her garden, um, um, making flowers, planting flowers, keeping flowers, taking care of flowers, watering flowers, blowing flowers, and her talent, her creativity, her brilliance uh, was developed in that. You know, Alice Walker kind of talks to us about how um, if her mother, if her family, um, you know, her family developed like that and her mother's talents developed like that without going to school, without uh, um, having access to education, you can imagine how much creativity, um, you know, that was with, just within her mother because her mother um, showed her creativity in her garden. Um, and her mother was known three counties um, three counties knew of her mother's work because her flowers were the best flowers. Um, she had the green thumb. Whatever she planted grew, and it was just an amazing thing. So Alice Walker talks to us about her mother and her family and how um, a lot of black people's families, uh, you know, there's a lot of creativity and a lot of women uh, that we haven't discovered and that we missed out on because of what happened to black women in America and, you know, to stretch it out around the world. Um, so In Search of a Marvin Mother's Gardens, it talks a lot about creativity in black women and how the Southern black women, you know, they their rights were taken away from them. Their creativity was taken away from them uh, because the world didn't welcome them. America didn't welcome them. Um, this existence that we lived didn't welcome uh, them um, yet. Uh, so, so you know, she talks about that and she even goes to say that, um, think about all black women that went um, um, to church in the South um, during that era. Think about um, all the women who, who sing their, their souls out in church. Um, think about all of the uh, black women who had voices um, that, that could pretty much break bottles that were never discovered. Think about all the black painters and all of black artists who were women that were never discovered. Um, she, she kind of tells us to think about that. The other thing that she does within this work that makes that you know makes you think, that makes me think um, about the South and black women in the South in this era uh, was how she said that um, these women, they became kind of temples and they became kind of um, these these prophets in a way because you know they had to disattach themselves from their bodies because in the physical world they were being raped beaten assaulted uh they were they were property uh they were uh, they were just not human so in order to survive in order to exist during the um era of slavery uh they had to disattach themselves they had to to disattach themselves from reality and kind of live in a way where they're looking for a better tomorrow but they know a better tomorrow uh, will never come that they're going to die. Uh, they were going to be born and die a slave. So that's pretty much what happens in this essay in terms of a deeper meaning, in terms of analysis. Um, you just got to, you know, really look at this essay and what it's saying about society in general. I mean, still today, uh, women, um, when you compare women to men, uh, there's a lot of benefits and there's a lot of um, privilege that men get that black women especially don't get. If you're thinking about America, it's kind of like 
um, you know, there's classes to it. Um, and black women are, you know, oftentimes counted out because they're black and then they're women and society still, um, you know, doesn't really open all of its doors for black women just yet. Uh, so even today, even in the, the 21st century today, um, there are black artists out there. There are black women out there that are being counted out, that are not, that are being over, overlooked. And Alice Walker is saying that society and their creativity is being stifled. She even tells us that some of them could even be driven to madness because sometimes you have so much creativity. I mean, if you really um, do some research on it and you look at how much artists light up when they're, they're doing their work, it's astonishing because some artists, they lose themselves in their music and their writing and their poetry and their art. They'll spend 24 hours a day working on their craft. Uh, they'll spend um, their whole lifetimes devoted to their craft. I mean, if you look at America today and what black people have provided to culture in terms of music, in terms of, of, of movies, in terms of art, in terms of um, any field, really, you have black people in the medical field, in the science field. Um, you know, these, these are people that are driven. These are people uh, that want to be something. And it's something that's that's driving the world to be a better place, to be a more inclusive place. Um, and, and they're making contributions to society that makes society better. Um, so it's really ridiculous um, that the human being as a whole, um, you know, seeks to destroy a part of it rather than include a part of it. That's something that's very strange uh, because the human body, we're all humans at the end of the day. We are we are all one species. The fact that we are literally trying to destroy a part of the species makes no sense. Um, and, you know, just like, I mean, the, the greatest example that I can give that, that all, always um, makes people think is that when you look at the United States, right? When you look at the United States, when the Olympics comes around, uh, you always see the U.S. team, the U.S. Olympic team. You always see... Um, a mixture of nations, right? You see black people, white people, Hispanic people, people that are coming from all parts of the world represented in the U.S. teams. Uh, but when you look at other countries, you look at other nations, it's just that nation. It's just one specific group of people. But America, oftentimes, it, it wins a lot of in the Olympics or in the history of the Olympics, the United States wins a lot because it's a mixture of all types of different strengths, all, it's a mixture of all types of different intelligences. It's a mixture of, of different cultures and ethnicities, um, and it makes you stronger. Uh, so division never makes you stronger, but inclusion and, and taking all your best parts and pushing them forward always makes you better. Um, so, you know, that's that's one thing that Alice Walker really um, pushes forward in this essay, in my point of view. She really, you know, gets under your skin and lets you know that we lost a lot by these women that we lost in the South during the age of slavery. Um, we lost their creativity and their beauty and all of the things that they could have given to this world. So that's my summary analysis of this essay by Alice Walker. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in my next video.